So we want to think about the symmetries whether uh, of cosine and sine, whether cosine and sine are even functions, odd functions, or neither, what's going on with that. So let's just remember how we test. Uh, in, ver in words, it says, if I flip the sine of the input of, let's say, the cosine function, how does the output change? And one very important thing is I'm not yet talking, I'm not actually using the geometric uh, interpretation. Even though I've got a picture here, you, you, you suspect I'm going to use it in a minute, which is correct. I'm not talking about y-axis symmetries or x-axis symmetries because cosine and sine are a little tricky. We're only starting to sort of understand them as functions, just barely. But um, we really want to be careful about how they work as functions. This circle, which is the basis of all our understanding of cosine and sine, is not the graph of the cosine function or of the sine function. It's not a graph of anything. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. It's the fundamental geometry of that. And we will graph cosine and sine as functions eventually. Pretty soon, actually. But right now, we want to just think about the basic idea of input and output for a function. And so uh, algebraically, it's like cosine. What happens if I put in like minus t instead of t into cosine? Well, let's see. So, And, and really, I think it's better to think about it algebraically. Uh, verbally for right now. If I f flip the sign of the input of the cosine function, let's put the, how does the output change? And what's the input of the cosine function? It's an angle. It's like this 30 degrees or pi over 6, or equivalently you can think of it as an arc on the circle, but we usually think of it as this angle down here. Okay, so for example, let's just do one example real quick. We're going to do cosine of minus pi over 6. I'm going to use radians exclusively here. Okay, well let's see. Here's cosine, here's pi over 6, and cosine is the x coordinate, root 3 over 2. What about minus pi over 6? That's instead of going clock, counterclockwise, we go clockwise. So here's minus pi over 6. Let me put that in here. This is the angle minus pi over 6. And what about the x and y coordinates? Well, we already figured that out. We saw that yeah, the x coordinate is the same because it's just flipped over the uh, y axis, the x axis. And the y coordinate is the same except for the sine. And so there's cosine, there's sine. That gives us the answer to our question, at least in this case. Cosine of minus pi over 6 is the same exact answer as I would have gotten for cosine of pi over 6. So this observation we had um, in, one of the, in a couple of the problems we've seen, where if instead of going counterclockwise, you go clockwise, systematic changes, or sometimes no change at all, happen to the cosine and sine. Let's see. So this is suggesting that when I change the input of the cosine function, nothing happens. And so the conjecture is that it's an even function. Cosine is an even function, because that's what it means to be an even function. OK. Well, let's just test uh, something a little more random. Suppose I took a point like up here. Uh, it's not working. Oh, I see. I didn't. I didn't do the point tool. Okay. So let's say we took a point here at like this is 0.3 comma about 0.95 something like that. That corresponds to some angle going up from here to here. I don't know what the angle is, and I don't care. What I'm going to do is I'm going to then think about what if I went the same exact amount instead of counterclockwise going clockwise. Well, that's going to end up symmetrically down here. Ooh, I can't even get it. Let's see. There's point three. Oh yeah, point three here. Somewhere around here. Okay. So if this up here is given by this is going to be cosine t. Oop. Sine t. And I forgot the parentheses. Then down here this point down here, let's see if I can fit it in here, that's going to be cosine of minus t. Notice I need the parentheses now around the, because I don't want to make it look like subtracting t from the number cosine. That wouldn't make any sense. Okay, and so look at what's happening. The cosine of minus t is exactly the same as the cosine of t. And now let's think about what happened with the sine as well. So that seems to confirm that cosine is, is even. Let's write that down. Okay, that does look to be true looks true when I change, why is it true, change t to minus t 
I flip across the x-axis so I don't change the x-coordinate of the point and so I don't change cosine because that's what cosine is on the unit circle. Okay, and so in fact it's an even function cosine of the, to summarize, summarize that in algebraic language cosine of minus t equals cosine t. That's a really good thing to memorize for the rest of your mathematical life. Now what about sine? Well we've basically got enough information here. When we went counterclockwise pi over 6 or clockwise pi over 6 we flipped across the x-axis that does change the y variable but it just changes the sine. Similarly here if sine of t is about 0.95 here sine of minus t the counterclockwise the clockwise rotation ended up to be just minus that it's just minus 9, 0.95 right at the bottom here and so that is changing the sign. So when I change the angle, when I flip the angle, so in other words counterclockwise instead of counter, uh, counterclockwise, then I do flip the sign of sine. Ooh, that's confusing. And so sine of minus t equals minus sine of t. And that's an odd function. Okay, so cosine is even, sine is odd. And you don't have to memorize that if you can think about this picture and think about any, almost any example about what happens between, the difference between going counterclockwise and clockwise. And it doesn't change cosine, but it does change sine. Cosine is even, uh, cosine is even, and sine is odd. There we go.